Hello, I'm Dennis Hanthorne, General Director of the Atlanta Opera. And in March of 2012, the Atlanta Opera will be presenting the Southeastern premiere of The Golden Ticket, a comic opera based on the book of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Today we have the composer and the librettist, Peter Ash, composer and librettist, Donald Stork with us. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very nice much. to be here. It's great to have you in Atlanta, and between the two of you, who first came up with the idea of, uh, of mounting Charlie and the Chocolate Factory into an opera? Well, I think it was your idea, actually. Was it? Yes. I don't know. We could <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I had this loose role uh, with, the, with the Dahl estate after Roald Dahl died. I, I got to know him. I, made, I was a young director at the BBC, and I made a, a, a documentary about him. And after he died, his widow had asked me to help her set up a commissioning program to create new orchestral pieces. And we had actually commissioned our first opera, uh, which Peter conducted. And it was, it was in the course of conversations about that that I gave him some songs that somebody else had written for a musical to just have a listen to, to see what he thought about. And uh, he came back saying, oh, they're, they're perfectly fine, but I think I'd like to, like to do it. Like and, and it should be an opera and not a musical. And it's sort of started from there. Well, what comes first, the libretto or the music? Well, the thing that came first is the story and the possibility for the story as a lyric thing, certainly. When I read the story, I, I thought it had immense possibilities as a, a family opera, which in, indeed it is, and came up with a, a few I, musical ideas that I, I thought might be worth, worth uh, using. And, and Donald and I discussed how the storyline might... Um, might be presented on, on the lyric stage, and, um, and that's a big challenge. Well, talk a little bit about the creative process of how you take a book that's so famous and transform it to the stage. Well, I think, I, I think the chief sort of dramaturgical problem with the adaptation is what to do with the, one of the main characters, i.e. Charlie, the little boy. Um, because the, one of the reasons the book is so powerful is because 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 Charlie's a little bit of an empty space, the reader is unable to put themselves into his position, and therefore the reader becomes, in some way, a participant. Now, I think when you put something on stage, you you have to deal with something else. In fact, it's quite funny that that Dahl himself once described, off the record, but Charlie as a boring little bugger. You know, he is. <laughs> so 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 you have to you have to deal with that. And one of the ways we dealt with it was was to bring in a little bit of extra tension about him winning the ticket. In the book, there's no sense that he deserves to win the ticket. It is just purely luck. Whereas we've suggested that Willy Wonka might be roaming the streets outside his factory looking for the perfect child and might have, in fact, found him already and might ensure that he gets his ticket. Because, so we created this character of the, the sweet shop owner, Mr. No, which is a... A no, he's his name, which is like Wonka backwards. Um, so that's you know that was that was one of the that was the principal thing we did that changed from the or, original. Otherwise, we have, we've been pretty faithful to the original story. And, and as Donald said, when you you know when you read the story, you be, you become Charlie, and and to suddenly see the person that you might have become in your own imagination on stage is a real challenge. And it's particularly a challenge in relation to the other four children in the story. Um, and, but that's also part of what I felt would make it into a, a fantastical, colorful family opera, um, in as much as those four children, Violet Beauregard, Veruca Salt, Augustus Gloop, and Mike TV, all have, um, all have mm. operatic characters that, that are stereotypes that work really well. Violet Beauregard is a colored tier soprano. Veruca Salt is a kind of sassy mezzo who would like to be a soprano, a spoiled rich girl. Uh, um, Augustus Gloop is, is a stereotypical fat tenor, and um, and Mike TV is a is a slightly um, uh, uh, well video obsessed, uh, underdeveloped um, counter tenor. I don't know how to quite put this and make it not sound totally politically incorrect, but but that's part of the danger and 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 and, and humor in the in the in the story. Um, and if I can just chip in too, that yes. that's one of the reasons why we made those grotesque children into adults was again to help throw the, the spotlight onto, onto Charlie as the, the only 
the only child child. The others are grotesque children. And, and the opportunity that, the, that the, 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 those characters offered was to kind of create a compendium of, um, of musical types that, that, I, that, that I, I thought, oh, well, actually, kids or even adults who are coming to see an opera for the first time will we'll get a sense of what that broad palette of what opera can do in this piece was a, was a golden opportunity. Um, and, you know, but, but then how the music came out of that is, 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 is another issue. It, every, every character in the piece has their little moment, and Charlie's is his, is his little moment. And, um, whereas the other characters sing about themselves and their greed and their, and, and their bad habits um, and, and what they want, Charlie actually has a different role in his aria. And, the danger is that he's very sentimental. And so what we came up with was, that, was, the idea, was from based on the idea that, that, um, that Charlie lives with his grandparents. We actually had to get rid of the parents um, because there were too many characters. So we changed the story in that way. And so Charlie just lives with his grandparents. And of course, as we all know, they all eat cabbage soup and they sleep in the same bed. Um, and so what I came up with was a kind of snoring quartet uh, in close harmony, and um, and it's kind of funny and weird and sad. This little snoring music, and and then Charlie has his aria over the top of that, and and he doesn't sing about what he wants. He sings uh, about uh, about what his wonderment about what his grandparents have going on in, in their minds, and what you get from that is that Charlie really has his own interior world in a way that the other characters, the other cartoon strip characters in the opera don't, maybe don't. Peter, um, you're the composer of this work, and this is the first time that you're going to have a chance to conduct this work. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, that. <laughs> and what you're thinking about? I'll be able to tell you about that after the fact. Well, I, I just know that I, you know, when as a conductor, you know, your responsibility is to, to literally be the lightning rod of the conductor, I think, between what you, you feel the composer might have uh, wanted the music to sound like, and and the players and and the audience and and you know what what a conductor's job is to is to imagine the sound and shape the sound while it's going on using gesture. And I think my problem is is that I'm so excited at even the idea of hearing my own noise come come to I mean noise in a positive sense I hope um, come to life. I'm so excited about that 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 I kind of lose my take on 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 on, on the certain aspects of precision and so on and so forth. So that I'll, I'll be I'll be challenged in that context. Talk a little bit about the orchestration. Typically, an orchestra for an opera, uh, for a Mozart Mozart size orchestra, may be in the neighborhood of 32 to 40 musicians in the orchestra pit, and a work by Puccini or Verdi could be as many as 75. You have an orchestration. 23, 24 musicians? Yes, that's right. What we have in this instance is really inspired by the chamber operas of Benjamin Britten, um, where he had um, solo instruments. So what you have in the pit is, is an ensemble of 23 soloists. It also comes from my long experience of, of I was, was a horn player. I played in the London Sinfonietta, and, so, and a lot of the repertoire that was commissioned for the London Sinfonietta, um, which is a kind of virtual, uh, virtuoso ensemble of soloists, it, it, it was commissioned for this type of this type of ensemble. So what you have are five solo string players. You've got two violins, a viola, a cello, that's a string quartet, plus a double bass to add that extra octave and, and richness, which is of course is what you have with the string orchestra, but you just have one of each player. Well talk a little bit about the cast. Well I think we, we I mean, we're very happy with the cast we have. Yeah um, very happy. and um, we've done uh, Daniel Coolidge who sang um, Willy Wonka in, in St. Louis was absolutely ideal and um, I'm very much looking forward to, to If actually, I could just chip in yes, do chip just, in. Just, I, I, I think actually one of the things which, which you're not going to see in this production but perhaps if you come and see it you'll, you'll ponder upon it is this idea we had that Willy Wonka was really quite old and that's why he gives up the factory and that he's he, you know, there's a real reason why he needs to hand it on to a child. Um, and Dan Coolidge sings absolutely fantastically, <laughs> but in some ways he's a little bit too young and glamorous. Um, he's for, definitely you know, for, glamorous. For, for, yeah. for, you know, for the character that we, were, that we were talking about. Tell us a little bit about the audience response, and you have traditional opera audiences that come to see this opera, and a large number of first-timers coming. You mentioned a lot of families will come to see this production. Um, talk about those two type of audiences and their perception of this work. 
Well, I, I think we mentioned that, that before that, um, that the opera was intended to be for a family audience. What's for in, in Ireland? It was, it was an older audience, and, and, um, but, but the great thing about that was the ones who did come and who brought their children, and indeed grandchildren, those are the ones who the, 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 the piece is for, and, and, and it really worked for those people, I think. I'm very confident about saying that. In St. Louis, we had much more of a family audience, and there was much more buzz. They, the, the effects are great fun. And, uh, and surprising and very different from the movie and very theatrical. Well, we hope that you will come and see The Golden Ticket, the Atlanta Opera 2012 at the Cobb Energy Performing Arts Center. I want to thank Peter Ash, composer, and Donald Sturrock, librettist, for visiting with us today. And we hope to see you at one of our performances. Thank you very much.